This episode takes place a month ago. I didn't record enough narration on the day, so I have to fill in the gaps from the future. Do, 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 do. I don't have the rights to the music I want to use, so this is temporary music. On August 7th, 2016, I met Damon John. If you don't know who that is, you might recognize him from Shark Tank. Roll the clip. Damon John dominated the fashion world with FUBU. Now he's the branding expert behind multiple global brands generating billions in sales. The way that I met Damon John was through his book tour. Damon has a book out called The Power of Broke, how empty pockets, a tight budget, and a hunger for success can become your greatest competitive advantage. It's a book for entrepreneurs. This event popped up in my Facebook feed that said that he was going to be at Porter Square Books on August 7th. Porter Square Books is like two train stops away from where I work, so there was no way that I was going to not go see him. As I approached Porter Square Books, I was actually surprised not to see a line out the door. There wasn't any sort of gathering outside. There didn't seem like there was anything special going on until I walked through the doors. And then I saw people lined up to get their books signed, but it wasn't really a lot of people. And now Porter Square Books is a small space. They really can't even accommodate all that many people, but even that being the case, they have plenty of room. So I was very surprised by that. Somebody in line said to me, yeah, if he wanted to, he could have filled out the entire space. All it takes is one email blast from him and he would have had the place covered, but he probably didn't want that. He probably just wanted a select few individuals. And he was late. They said that he was delayed by something. While we were waiting in line, one of the people next to me said, of course he's late. You can't be on time when you're that high status because it, what does that show? It shows you have nothing else to do. Like, so, in him showing up late, it's like he built anticipation for his arrival. And like, we were all feeling it. We were just anxious. Like, when's he going to get here? And like, uh, you know, what's going on? Is he even going to show up at all? And like, when he finally did come, which was like an hour and a half late, we were just like, ah, you know, and he's finally here. Like, so I feel like that guy might have been onto something. Although... Could have just been he was genuinely running late. Who knows? To start things off, Damon gave a talk. Money to become successful, that's not true because you see uh, athletes three years out of the league are retiring who have $100, $200 million. They don't know how to use the tool of money. Over 60% of them are broke, right? A lot of winners. Over 60% are broke. And if you need the money to make money, then anybody that comes from a wealthy family should just automatically be rich with generational wealth usually disappears only one generation after. And I don't have a famous last name, well I do, but when I called Elton John to tell him I was his son, <laughs> he didn't believe me for a couple of reasons. Maybe because I'm short. <laughs> so, thank you. And what, what's uh, really important while you're here is you're in the room full of like-minded people. And, you know, think about it. Your, your potential next investor may be here with you, a distributor, or a coder. You know, OPM is not other people's money. It's other people's manufacturing, other people's minds, other people's marketing, other people's mentors. You don't know who here is the yin to your yang and can potentially do the things that you can't do. And mentors aren't necessarily always older than you. We're in a generation where many of you, if you're over 35 or 40, you are what they call digital immigrants. And if you're under 30, you're a digital native. So maybe you don't necessarily need a mentor that's older than you. Maybe you need a mentor that's younger than you that can pick up these smartphones and touch the entire world and show you how to maximize your product or your, your uh, communication to the rest of the world so you don't have to worry about having inventory depending on a store, whatever the case is. Retailers like this can only support you if you support them in return and if you're able to drive crowds to here. Right? They, once I said I was coming out here, it was really up to me to help drive the crowd. Of course, they participated and went out there and told you I was here, but it's a symbiotic relationship. So if you want to get into retail, you have to support them just as much as they support you. So thank you for coming out. I'm going to try to run through everybody's uh, book. I am going to, I'm going to get to everybody. I'm going to take a picture with everybody. Now, I'm going to sign my name and then your name. 
I'm not signing. Congratulations to you and Pookie on the cupcake store. I'm dyslexic, we'll be there a long time. And my wrist hurt, I had a little biking accident. My wrist hurt so I can't write but so much. And we're gonna make sure the ones with the younger children and or having challenges walking, maybe a little more mature or, or something else went on with you. We're gonna make sure you, you get shuffled into the front of the line. Please do not start limping on purpose. And uh, remember hashtag the power broke. Um, and I'll shout you out on my Facebook and everything else. And I love you. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate you. All right, bye. From there, we all got in line. And then one by one, he would sign the person's book. His assistant would take a picture of the two of them together. And then the next person would go. Everything was going smoothly, but then there was a disruption. The book signing was happening right in front of a bench inside the store. Some guy came in and he sat down in the bench and he wouldn't leave. And he was just staring at Damon as he signed stuff. Damon's assistant asked him to leave because he was kind of in the way. The assistant was like backing up to take photos and he was like bumping into this guy almost and I don't know, it was just kind of creepy and weird. Like, the guy didn't have a book to sign. He wasn't in line. He was just sitting in the chair looking at the signing. So instead of just leaving when Damon's assistant asked him nicely, this guy just started an argument saying, I have every right to be here, blah, 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 blah. The assistant was saying to us in line, like, just don't pay him any mind. Don't give him any attention. Just completely ignore him. The staff ejected him right before it was my turn to get my book signed. As he was signing my book, I just made a quip. I was like, this is the most drama I've ever seen in a bookstore. And him and everyone else around him started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, it just made my day. It's like, it didn't matter that he is literally like a billionaire. I was able to make him laugh. Like comedy is universal and we just, we had a connection in that moment, like however fleeting. So even after the store told the guy to leave, I think he still put up a fight. And so they called the cops and the cops showed up and I got a little bit of that interaction. Sidewalk's fine. Not their bench, not their tables, but anything that's public, uh, you're obviously free to uh, spend your time. Better business. Better business bureau? Yeah, pretty good one, yeah. All the attorney general's office felt you were harassed. I would go with the attorney general. So yeah, uh, here's the book. Here's the signature. He just wrote my name with an exclamation point. There was no message or anything like that, but he did hurt his hand and he had a lot of people to go through, so I, I get that. But uh, I just thought it was funny because I have some other book signings where they write something. I don't know. Anyway. It seems like he knows me. He's like, Hugh! <laughs>